They don't want us to get the crumbs that fall on the ground. Nothing. They want to, matter of fact, they want to take it all away from you. And that's the part that I can't understand. I think these guys are getting in the back room, smoke filled room, and they're saying, hey, let's do this. Let's try to kill and let's try to change the market so that we don't have to worry about unions anymore. Since June, unionized food manufacturing workers in Memphis have been on strike against management, against the conglomerate that owns their factory, and against an economy that's still tilted against workers. The factory makes soy protein isolate. Its clients are some of the biggest food manufacturers in the world, including Nestle, Abbott, and virtually anyone that makes a protein bar. The factory has been in operation for decades, providing good middle-class jobs until now. It's not just about the contract at this point. It's about being able to assemble and unionize and fight for your working conditions in general. The strike was forced upon us. Nobody wanted to, to strike. We didn't want to come out here. Me being second generation, my father retired from here. I would like to be able to preserve this job for the next generation. When we started negotiation, we brought forth about 19 proposals and only a few of them affected people monetarily. And we agreed on absolutely nothing. We have a sister plant that's in Gibson City. Right before we went through negotiations, those, those guys end up, the maintenance department end up with a 9% pay increase, and the production department end up with a 6% pay increase. They didn't ask for, to eliminate anything, but since, I'm 90, since it's 90% of African-American in a predominantly African-American town. For years, the factory is owned by DuPont Chemical, which agreed to contracts with good benefits and working conditions. But it was sold in 2020 to a conglomerate called International Flavors and Fragrances, and that's when things began to get dire. IFF made more than $4 billion in gross profit in 2022, but now it wants to take away overtime and wreck worker health care plans. They even want to take away paid lunch breaks. The company doesn't want to give us what we deserve. They don't want to give us the anything after eight. They don't want to give us better benefits. They don't want to give us, you know, the ability to take breaks freely uh, with no consequence. They don't want to give us incentives. And so we're fighting for those unions that want to continue to fight for their betterment. The sanitation strike happened here in Memphis. If you can't stand for something that you truly believe in and your history, history have a way to go over again. I would think that it, get, it would get better, but it hasn't. Instead of it getting better, it's going downhill. We're going back to slavery time. Anytime you take all your stuff away, you have no rights, no say so, no nothing. Right now we have a year notice on our health benefits. Well, all of our benefits actually. Uh, so they want to change that to 30 days. What that would mean for us is that all they have to do is give us a 30 day notice. They can take whatever they want away. Our premiums have gone up. Our premiums have doubled and tripled. Before we switched over to universal health care, we had Aetna. And Aetna was actually pretty good. Each week with Aetna, I was paying $167 a week. Um, and this is for a family of four. So for me, my husband, and my two children. Now I'm paying almost $300. That is a, a significant chunk out of my paycheck. So I would at least get $700 a week, but now that this dwindled down to almost $500, $400, dollars IFF's holdings and subsidiaries make it a massive corporation. It owns the single largest share of the flavors and fragrances market and owns one of the largest shares of the soy protein market. Much of that comes thanks to the workers in Memphis. We put our life into our jobs because we held it to a higher standard. We had to recognize what we're doing. We're not making dog food or nothing like that. We're feeding the world. Babies, old folks like me, and people with different health issues, drink the insurance, different stuff like that from them. They, they very much rely on us, but they may claim that they don't by saying that since we've been on strike, we're going to hire what we need to keep it running. But the last time I checked, without us, you can't run the metric tons you need each day. Now you're running less than what, pretty much 90% less than what we usually run in a day. And when it comes down to the final product and stuff, that's what matters. Then it's a lot of unskilled, unknowledgeable people in their work who put their life on the line every day. Because it's stuff in there, it only takes a split second for something to go wrong where you're going to be missing a foot, a toe, a head. We got that kind of equipment in there. We run old pieces of equipment like that. And if you don't know what you're doing, you'll get hurt. You'll get hurt or lose your life. They absolutely want to, in my opinion, they want to break up the union. This is one of the few jobs in the city 
that pays above the average warehouse wage. They're trying to force us out in, in hopes of you know, having a company without a union because unions are fighting for stuff that they don't want to give. You know, we're a single shop union. So, you know, it's, it's kind of hard for 150 people to fight a billion dollar corporation. It is. Seems like they got endless money, endless resources. But it's going to come a time where they're going to need to produce. And that's where we come in. Thank you so much for watching our video. If you'd like to see more stories like this one, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel to get more More Perfect Union in your feed. And if you have any ideas for stories that you would like for us to investigate, just drop them in the comments below.